Hello everyone. In today's short video, we will try to install Forge CLI. Uh, check that installation looks good and create our first Forge app. We will use this guide from Atlassian step by step to configure Forge, all required dependencies and create our first app. Uh, I will share all the links in the description for this video. So, first of all, we need to install Node.js. We need it for, for CLI, for development process, and for many, many different reasons. Depends on your host system, you need to follow one of these paths. And first of all, install NVM. This tool assists you to manage multiple Node.js installations and quickly switch between them to be um, very flexible with multiple configurations you need to support. For example, in your daily work, you need uh, Node.js LTS version, long-term support version. For your pet project, you prefer to use latest version of Node.js. And with NVM, you can easily switch between them on the fly. When it's installed, you can easily check that it works good by this common NVM space LS, which show you which versions currently installed, which you are able to install, and which currently in use. As you can see, currently version which I'm using already, it's version 20, which is currently a long-term support version. So it's already installed, you don't need to do anything else. Next step, we need to install Forge. Just follow these steps, and when it's installed, you can check the installation by forge minus minus version command. As you can see, I already have version 10.2. Okay, next important step is to authenticate our forge environment uh, that all the comments which we will use later will be authenticated with your account. To do this, you need to go to Atlassian uh, API tokens management page, create a new token, and then follow the authentication process. If something goes wrong, uh, it's also the possibility, if your authentication through this forge login command doesn't work well, you can follow the steps here, which allows you to set special environment variables with your forge email and forge API token. If everything configured properly, you can check it with forge who am I command. As you can see, I authenticated with my email and ID. Okay, let's clean it and go back to this page. Uh, looks like everything configured. We have Node.js installed, Forge CLI installed. And we can start creating our first Forge app. To do this, let's create some folder. I have it already. I have the folder project. Let's go to this folder. Projects. And here we need to start creating our app by typing Forge space create. It will start the creation wizard process, which require from us First of all, enter some name for our cool app, which we are going to build. Uh, for this Hello World, we will try to build um, Jira panel. So the standard Jira panel, which extends the Jira UI and allows you to show something on the standard issue view page. Jira panel. Uh, of course, you can set something more meaningful here. And next step is the most important because you need to decide from which template you will create your Forge app, your first Forge app. Uh, there are a few options. You can click to show all and see all the available templates. It's just the ability to see pretty simple but ready to go uh, snippet or template with Forge and some modules already implemented here. 
Uh, for our example, let's use custom UI. Of course, we are trying to do something for Jira and then find the model which is called Jira issue panel. Uh, why we have so many different models, templates, I hope I will explain in one of the next videos. So now we need to wait a bit while our templating app is creating. And when it will be done, we can use our ID to open it and uh, start development process. I prefer to use Visual Studio Code, but you can use ID which you like more. So let's go to this folder, our Jira panels, and start Visual Studio Code here. As you can see, uh, we in the start standard project where we have three of all our files from Jira panel project, where the most important are our manifest YAML file and package.json. In manifest file, we have everything which Forge need to know to be installed properly on the instance. It has sections like modules, resources, permissions, and app. In modules, we must define all the extensions which we bring to our Jira instance, or Confluence, or Compass, or Bitbucket, whatever. This name means that we would like to bring new issue panel for Jira. This is our unique key of our panel. This is resource, so it means visual part which we will use for our panel. And here we can find the resolver, so it means backend functions which we will use for calculations, some long running tasks, and so on. I will explain it later. Which size we will have, how it will be called, so what's the name of the panel we will see inside Jira, and some default icon. In package.json, we can see the standard configuration for any other Node.js project where we have name, version, dependencies, and our main script. Our main script is located here in index.js file in source folder. Here you can find only one function, actually. Something that wrapped with resolver define um, interface. It's the standard way how Forge allows you to communicate between front-end and back-end because Forge itself it's a lambda functions. Uh, you need to be able to call it somehow to reach this function. So from our front-end application we will call this function which gets some um, issue fields and return it back and show it in our UI. But where is UI? Where is the front-end part of our application? By default, from the template, it's created here in the static hello world folder. Uh, and you can see one more package is on for our front-end. And this looks like more or less like a standard React application, which created with create React app uh, script. And in sources, we can find our application, which is again, as I said, more or less standard React application with the bridge functions, which allow us to call backend functions from the front end. Okay, so we have front end application, backend application, our Lambda functions, and we have manifest, which glue everything together and say that we will use our resources, means front-end application, our Lambda function, all together in the issue panel. How to start all this beauty? Let's run the terminal and do two things. First of all, we need to build our front-end application. So let's go to static, hello world, and here click npm install to install all the dependencies for our front-end application. 
it could take some time to download all the dependencies in node modules folder. Looks well, I hope. And here we can run our uh, build to start the build process, which will make our application uh, build it in the single HTML and JavaScript file. Bam, start build. Mm -hmm. My bad. NPM run build. As you can see, the build folder is currently appear here, which means that the build finished and we have our HTML file with our front end and some JS files with all the JavaScript logic. So what next? Next, we need to go back to our root folder of our Forge app and here deploy our application. What does it mean? Now we will pack everything together, our front-end part, our back-end Lambda functions, and this command will send it to a managed environment where all the Forge applications are located. Our one also will be located somewhere in Atlassian ecosystem. It will take some time, but when it's done, it means our application are ready to be installed on one or multiple instances. And now it's done. Perfect. Let's try to install it. To install it, we will use forge install command. Let's have a look at our Jira instance. Let's copy this address and go back to ID. So it's ask us what we're going to do. We're going to install it to Jira and we're going to install it to this URL. And we should agree that we will give some permissions to the app. Okay, we agree because we are going to check how the app looks like inside Jira. Wait for installation. And when it's done, we can check that our app installed, first of all, here inside Manage Apps. As you can see, Jira.panel already installed. Yeah, this installed, everything's right. And let's go to some project. I have just a few test one. Do I have any issues? Yes. Let's open any issue view. And here we need to check the apps. And we can find our Jira panel, which looks like the panel here and issue view below the description. It will start loading process and show us issue labels, nothing. Why? Because this uh, simple app, this Hello World app, uh, just request the Lambda function, which requests Jira REST API, which get all the labels and just show it here in the panel. Not quite useful, but pretty nice for um, show how it works in general. So if you'll find a few labels here, like this, and refresh our page, we should be able to see that all the labels from this current issue are loaded properly inside our panel. Here we are. Great, so everything works as we expected. Our app um, deployed, installed on our instance and do and doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It means gets the issues, uh, get the current issue and the labels field and just show it as a panel not much um, for the hello, not much useful, but pretty nice for hello world. 
uh, I hope in the next video I will explain how you can improve your development loop and how you can build something more useful. Thanks for watching.